This is your friend and host, Keith Johnson, founder of Biblical Foundations Academy International. Our mission is to inspire people around the world to build a biblical foundation for their faith. With this mission in mind, I have encountered within the pages of Scripture a most amazing prayer request and astounding affirmative answer from our Heavenly Father that is the inspiration for this new devotional series. Welcome to Proverb Pearls, discovering gems of wisdom for daily living. Well, folks, I have spent well over 200 hours recording two other audio series called Torah Pearls and Prophet Pearls that are available right now behind the Torah door here at BFAInternational.com. However, this series is going to be a bit different. For one, I have gone from working with two co-hosts in Torah Pearls and one co-host in Prophet Pearls to now going solo for this Proverb Pearls series. There's actually a practical reason for this shift, which I will try uh, and explain. Except on second thought, let's jump right into the series and I will address my reason for going solo later. Let's start digging for some gems of wisdom right now. A long time ago in a land far away, (laughs) I actually remember being encouraged to add the reading of Proverbs into my devotional time. For those who don't know what a devotional time is, it's a time to pray and read scripture, usually in a quiet place, as an act of devotion to God. It has been my practice to give the first part of my day, right after waking up, for my devotional time. Including other sections of scripture, I oftentimes would include reading one chapter of Proverbs for every day of the month at different times in my devotional life. I recently picked up this practice again beginning in July of this year after returning from China where I recorded the Red Letter series. Have you listened to that series yet? (laughs) It is free for all registered members. Anyway, July happens to have 31 days and Proverbs happens to have 31 chapters. So it was a perfect month to reconnect with the entire book. I enjoyed it so much I decided to do it again in August, which also happens to have, you guessed it, 31 days. After completing the book of Proverbs twice, I asked a question that led me into quite an encounter with wisdom, and now I want to share it with you. It took me all of these years and multiple times reading through Proverbs to ask a really important question. Where did Solomon get this wisdom that I encounter in the book of Proverbs? Have you ever asked that? I'm sure you probably have the answer, but for me, I needed to do something that I really love to do. I love to take a peek in the original scriptures. I like to say there's three things that I need in order to understand when I'm reading my Bible, language, history, and context. So these things uh, led me to do what was natural, and that was to go back to the first time that we saw this encounter of wisdom with Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 4, it says this, The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. Now, when I read that the first time, I thought, now this is a little bit of the context. Here you've got Solomon, who is the son of David. Uh, He's a young man at this point, and he's going to a high place to offer sacrifices. It just kind of didn't make sense to me, especially in light of what happens a little bit later in the story. But uh, this is the context. Solomon had just become king and he went to go do what kings do, and that is to offer the sacrifices as a way of telling uh, the creator of the universe, here I am, I'm your anointed one, ready to do your work. So it says um, in 1 Kings that that's where he went, was to Gibeon. But if I read a little further, add a little more context and go to 2 Chronicles, I find out something really, really interesting. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 3, it says this. And by the way, folks, the reason that I would look at Chronicles is that when I'm reading in Kings, that's the earlier account. The chronicler sometimes adds a little more information to sometimes even, if I can say, uh, fix the situation. And if you just read 1 Kings, it needs a little bit of fixing why Solomon is at a high place, and especially after we find out that God met him at the high place. But if we compare this passage with the account in Chronicles, here's what we find. 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 3. Then Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place which was at Gibeon, for God's tent of meeting was there, which Moses the servant of Yehovah, 
had made in the wilderness. In other words, Solomon wasn't just picking a high place. He was picking the high place. What the Israelites had done is they had taken the tent of meeting, which Moses had made in the wilderness and placed it at the high place in Gibeon. Now that is something that we could really spend a lot of time talking about because the ark wasn't with that tent. The ark was actually with David in Jerusalem. And I'd love to go into more depth, but I want to stay focused on what we're dealing with. Solomon is going to this place. He had just become anointed king and he goes to this place where the tent of meeting is. And then it says this in first Kings chapter three, verse five in Gibeon, Yehovah appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. And he said, ask what you wish me to give you. And at that point, we got to (laughs) stop. You have to love this. Ask me whatever you wish is what it says in in some like, what what, what do you mean? I I mean, literally, are you kidding me? So here, here, the creator of the universe meets Solomon at the high place where the tent of meeting is. And at night when it's quiet, that's oftentimes when he likes to meet with his people because it's so busy and so loud during the day. But at night when it's quiet, he meets Solomon. He says, hey, Solomon, ask me whatever you wish. Can I be honest and say before encountering Solomon's amazing prayer request and the astounding affirmative answer from his heavenly father, I would have taken a completely different approach. What about you? What would you request if the creator of the universe said, ask me whatever you wish? While you think about this, uh, let's take a peek just beneath the surface of your English translation to what I call the gem that Solomon displays in 1 Kings chapter 3. Okay, here comes the request, folks. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 7, the newly anointed King Solomon says these words. Now, O Yehovah, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David. Yet I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. In other words, Solomon is saying, I really don't know how to be king. This phrase to go out and to come in is oftentimes used in other parts of the Tananakh for the kings and the commanders that would lead the army out into battle and bring them back, hopefully in victory and peace. Solomon is saying, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to judge. I don't know how to be the leader, uh, the one who does. He's saying, listen, I'm just a little child. And then here comes the request. Now, folks. You know, I have to be honest with you. I am. I have been really dealing with this for the last um, couple months, and and I've been waiting to figure out how I would be able to share this information with you. And it it has really inspired me in ways in my personal life that uh, I'm convinced is going to bless those of you that are willing to go on this uh, this walk of wisdom with me in this devotional series. Because of Solomon's request, it literally changed what I would now say. If the father said to me, ask me whatever you want, I would respond the way Solomon did. Can we can we open up, open up your English Bible, whatever language you're listening in. uh, And here's what I have in the NASB, which happens to be one of my favorite English translations, just because I say it tends to be more wooden word for word. But it it can't do exactly what the Hebrew scriptures are going to do. And of course, I also have uh, the NIV, the nearly inspired version, I call it. No offense, folks. I like it because it helps me um, just if I'm reading something. In fact, I use that often in my devotional series because it's in the language that I sort of um, think and talk in. But I always love to have at least my Hebrew Bible uh, when I'm reading the Tanakh so that I can check and see what the what the words were that were, were given. But here's what it says that Solomon asked for. So give your servant, and I think you're going to probably find this in most translations. So give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, to discern between good and evil. Okay, Solomon, what do you want? Ask for anything. And Solomon says, could you give me an understanding heart? Now, I got to be honest with you. I've read Proverbs throughout my devotional life, probably, let's say I've read it 20, 30 times. Who knows? But I never really have taken the time to ask, really, what is Solomon saying? What does it mean to have an understanding heart? So can I give you the 
KJV or the Keith Johnson version of first Kings chapter three, verse nine. Literally what Solomon says is give your servant Lev Shomea in Hebrew. Give your servant Lev Shomea a hearing heart or a heart that is listening. <laughs> I love this. He says to the creator of the universe, you say, I can ask you for anything. Give me Lev Shomea to judge your people to understand slash discern between good and evil. Folks, I did a search and listen, maybe some of you will find something else. But in my sort of excitement of this, I thought to myself, well, surely this must be something that Solomon has heard from his father or from someone else. And I looked all throughout scripture. I can't find anywhere where we find these words that someone says, give me Lev Shomea, a hearing heart. Solomon, based on my search up to this point, is the only man in all of scripture to use these two words, hearing heart, together in this way. So the question becomes, so when God heard the request, how did he respond? Did God give Solomon what he asked for? What did Solomon really want? Did he want big ears hardwired to his heart? <laughs> I mean, let's see. First Kings chapter three, verse 11. Here's the response. And Yehovah said unto him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked for yourself long life, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have you asked for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself. And here it comes. You have asked for yourself discernment to understand justice. Now, folks, we don't even need the Hebrew Bible here to say that. I think God got this wrong here. I mean, he, he must have gotten it wrong. Solomon said, Give me Lev Shomea. God says, because you've asked for discernment to understand justice. Now, I, I, I looked even in the Hebrew and the, and the words Havin, Leshmoa, Mishpat are not in the request that Solomon asked, at least from a simple reading. But it gets better, folks. It gets better. First Kings chapter three, verse 12. God finally gives him the answer. He says this. Behold, Solomon, I have done according to your words. So I'm thinking, okay, he's going to do according to the words. Here he will say, here is Lev Shomea. No, <laughs> the father does this. Behold, I have given you in English a wise and discerning heart. Lev Chacham Venavon. So that there has been no one like you before you, nor shall one like you arise after you. Solomon says, one request, give me Lev Shomea. Father says, well, you, I know you say Lev Shomea, but what you really need is something more than that. I'm going to give you something that's deeper than that. I'm going to give you something that's going to go beyond Lev Shomea, but that matches Lev Shomea. I'm going to give you Lev Chacham Venavon. Lev, a heart. Hacham, wisdom, venavon, and understanding or discernment. As I'm digging, you all, I tell you what, this led me on such a path. And this is why I'm doing this series right now. It led me on such a path that just opened the door to, I, I don't even know how to say it. Solomon was the one who received the answer. And when he got the answer, he got more than what he asked for. I come to find out through some digging, that the words that God used to answer the prayer of Solomon were actually foreshadowed or used earlier in scripture. If we do a little more digging, we can see these two words, chacham, wisdom, venavon, and understanding, our discernment, uh, used before Solomon received them as a result of, re of his request for Lev Shomea, a hearing heart. The first time I see them in earnest is in, uh, I believe, yeah, Genesis chapter 41. Uh, Pharaoh uh, has a problem. He has a, had a, had, he's had a dream and it's troubling him and bothering him. And, and, and come to find out that right there uh, in his midst, though not in the palace, happened to be in the prison, was a man who could di discern dreams, interpret them. So, you know the story. Joseph has got up they you know, they shave him and they get him ready and they get his clothes and he stands before Pharaoh. And he says in Genesis 41, 33, after interpreting the dream, he says, now let Pharaoh look for a man discerning and wise. 
navon vehacham, switching the words backwards, not like hacham navon. Let you find someone who has these two things. Genesis 41, 39. So Pharaoh says to Joseph, since Elohim, God, has informed you of all these things, there is no one so discerning and wise as you are using the exact two root words, chacham venavon, discerning and wise as you are. But that gets better, folks. After we see Joseph using it, there is a verse that changed the game for me in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. Moses is speaking to the people and he's giving them a recap of everything that's happened. And he says this to them after talking about the Torah, the judgments, the statutes. He says now, so keep and do them for that is your, in Hebrew, chokhamah, your wisdom. And your understanding, Bina, the same root word. In the sight of the peoples who will hear about all these statutes and say these words. Surely, this great nation of Israel that's come out from the land of Egypt, that God has done all these things. Surely, this great nation is Am Chacham Venavon. This nation is a wise and understanding nation. People. There are those two words again. It's almost like here you've got it it through Joseph and then you've got the father through Moses speaking to the people and Yehovah is just waiting. Now, who's going to ask for this? Who's going to get close enough to ask for this? I said that eventually the nation is supposed to be such a, a nation that is a light that follows after me and lives my command of my Torah that people will say they are haham benavon. They are wise and discerning. It says in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 28, and all of Israel heard of the judgment. This is after the story of Solomon trying out his new hacham venavon. And he asked for Lev Shomea, a hearing heart. God said, no, you need more than Lev Shomea. You need wisdom and discernment. He then gets a chance to try it out in the story just after he gets it. When the people heard of the judgment, all Israel heard of the judgment, the mishpat of Solomon, which the king had judged, and they feared the king for they saw, and here it comes now, that the wisdom of God, hachemat Elohim, the wisdom of God was in Solomon to do judgment. So you got to ask yourself a question. Solomon said, Lev Shomea, a hearing heart. God said, what you really mean, because he's young, you know, maybe he didn't know. What you really want is wisdom and discernment or the ability to to choose between. I want to give, if I can, working definitions for this series on two words. Understanding. Bina, that's the root word, is the ability to separate right information from wrong. Wisdom, hochma, is the ability to incorporate the right information into action. Let me say it again. Understanding, bina, which is the root of the word navon, is the ability to separate right information from wrong. And wisdom, hochma, is the ability to incorporate the right information into action. Interesting. Another book that Solomon wrote, Ecclesiastes, as author, uh, 10 verse 2, it says, and I love this. He says, a wise man's lev, the heart of a wise man, directs him toward the right, but the foolish man's heart directs him toward the left. In other words, right versus left, Good versus evil. There are always several ways to go, but the wise heart leads one on to the right path. You know, I've always had a a really sort of a famous statement that uh, I've known about for a long time. Actually, my son actually put this on our refrigerator so I could see it on a regular basis. And he says on the refrigerator, it says, Yehovah, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. You know, folks, that's the famous uh, serenity prayer. Many people know that prayer. Uh, 
this serenity prayer, but I, I hate to kind of do this, but I want to do this I, as a result of what I have learned and am learning uh, in this encounter with wisdom. I think I might change it just a little bit to say, Yehovah, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to do the difference. <laughs> In other words, understanding, bina, the ability to separate right information from wrong. Wisdom, chokmah, the ability to incorporate the right information into action. So now for the fun part, I, I, I looked at the request that Solomon gave that Yehovah answered. And I thought, you know, if Solomon asked for Lev Shomea and received Lev Hacham Venavon, a heart that is wise and understanding, I wonder if Solomon somehow communicates that in his writings. And sure enough, after doing a little digging, I found something I, for me, you know, folks, I get a little excited when I when I'm reading scripture, especially when I come across things like this. I did a little statistical look and I said, you know, I wonder how many times Solomon actually uses the words wise, understanding and heart in Proverbs. So there are five verses in Proverbs that contain all three words, wise, understanding and heart. In other words, here is his request. Lev Shomea, Yehovah said, no, I'm going to give you Lev Hacham Venavon. We've got five verses in Proverbs that contain all three of those words. Eight of those ver eight verses contain wise and heart. Twenty seven verses contain the root words for wisdom and understanding. Uh, Hacham Venavon, those two, those two root words. Sixty six verses contain understanding or slash discerning all by itself. 97 verses contain heart all by itself. 96 verses contain the root word for wisdom used at least once in every chapter of Proverbs. Now, what are we going to do? <laughs> it's as if Solomon is speaking to us. Proverbs is an amazing book. I spend time in Proverbs. There's amazing things in Proverbs, but there's something that Solomon places at least once in every chapter that speaks to us regarding how we can live out what he was given. I have found what I call gems of wisdom that Solomon has inserted within at least one verse in each chapter of Proverbs that reflects back to his amazing prayer request and astounding affirmative answer from God. I am really excited that I'm able to share these gems in a devotional format with you. I am going to share one of these gems for every day of any month of the year so that you can continue to reflect on and apply these gems of wisdom into your life. Is there anybody interested in hearing about a few of these gems I dug up from the book of Proverbs? I mean, I... I have to tell you, when I when I finally honed it down and found that Solomon had done this, at least in one verse in every chapter of Proverbs, I'm convinced that he was being intentional. So here's the issue. Why am I going to go solo in this series? I actually have two reasons. First, the gems in Proverbs are individual in nature, meaning Solomon is talking to the individual. And I want this series to be a conversation from Solomon to you through little old me, just like I experienced Solomon's words of wisdom to me without having side dialogue between me and anyone else. The second reasoning is a little more personal. This devotional series is my heartfelt way of saying thank you to all of our BFA international supporters who are premium content library members. The 31 episode series will progress within the premium content library is my way to express my appreciation to our members for their invaluable support. Now, for those of you who do not understand how the premium content library works, there is a short video available when you click the gold enter the academy button on the homepage at bfainternational.com. There is a minimum monthly cost for maximum biblical information, inspiration, and revelation benefit. Check it out before you decide if you want to experience this walk of wisdom with us. Even if you choose not to join us as a premium content member, remember that we have a plethora of programs available for our free members, including our new red letter series and so much more. 
I also hope that now that you've heard the information, inspiration, a little bit of revelation that is the basis for this new series that we're about to launch, you might be inspired to join the remnant of folks who keep us going with their support and who also have access to many engaging audio, video, and written information, inspiration, and revelation in the premium content library. If so, all 31 gems are now available to you as a premium content member as a way to say thank you for joining us in our mission to inspire people around the world to build a biblical foundation for their faith. This series is just one more foundational brick now available inside of our premium content library. So pick a day, any day of the month, any day and start digging. Folks, I am inviting you. I, I literally want to say if I can, can I, can I just, can I just, how, do you, how can I say this? I'm almost pleading with you uh, to be a part of this series. What I have found in at least one of these verses in every single chapter as it pertains to what Solomon asked for and what he received as an answer from our Heavenly Father, we need it in our hour, in this hour. We need it in this day. We need people who will walk out what Solomon was given. And that is exactly what we're going to do. In this series, as I mentioned, if you're a premium content member, you can right now click and start pick a day. It's the 7th, 9th, 11th, 15th, or you can listen to all of them in a day. It's up to you. But you at least have one every single day of the month. And I'm going to ask those of you that, that, that do go on with us and even those that don't to continue to pray for us at BFA International. We really do need people that are committed. And, and we have so much that we give away and we send and we send things into people all over the world with no cost. This really is a small way uh, for me to say thank you to you all because we really can't do it without you. So the series is available. Um, those that choose to, to, to sign up, you'll be greatly appreciative for what we have in there. There's enough information in there to last you really for a year. I think the last uh, last count, there were over 50 some high quality presentations. You could take one a week for a year and, and still not see everything available. But for those that choose not to, we bless you. We hope that eventually you'll come to a place where you find that it's beneficial. But for now, what I want to do is I just want to get into these gems, offering them to you, and hopefully you will apply them into your life. Let's start digging. Uh, oh, and by the way, thank you.